call the meeting to order. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the June 15th, 2021 Post Falls City Council meeting. Shannon, please note all council members are present. Under ceremonies, announcements, appointments, uh, we do have one announcement, and that is I just confirmed that the city, we won't have a meeting prior to that. City Hall uh, business offices will be closed on Monday, the 5th of July. Police department will be open to walk-in traffic, and there are emergency numbers if you have uh, water, wastewater uh, issues. So don't have those here, but you can look them up. Are there any amendments to the agenda tonight? We do have an amendment. Warren, are you going to read that? Um, so we need to amend the agenda to add a second executive session item. And that's listed now on our agenda. Let me scroll down to the right page. <laughs> under, we need to add an executive session item under Idaho Code 74-2206-1A to consider hiring a public officer, employee, staff member, or individual agent. So moved. Second. Motion second. Further discussion? Roll call, please. Anthony? Aye. Borders? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Would you, uh, I guess what I should have also asked, are there any declarations of conflict, site visits, ex parte communications? No. Nope. Nope. Seeing none, would you please present the consent calendar? Item A's minutes, June 1st. 2021 I'm sorry yeah 2021 City Council meeting item B is payables May 25th through June 7th 2021 <coughs> item C is disposal of a police vehicle item D is 2021 asphalt chip seal and fog seal <coughs> placement notice of award item E is agreement to provide prosecution services for the city of Hayden item F is corporate park zone change reasoned decision and item G is black stallion ranch zone change reasoned decision I do have a question, uh, Mr. Wilson, on the uh, prosecution service for the city of Hayden. I know we do for the city of Rathrum. We do. I, and I know there's a uh, figure in there that the city of Hayden will pay. Uh, I know we, with the addition of the two judges, <coughs> we'll need additional prosecution. So with our current staff, we can handle Hayden. Have we added that additional staff member at this point? So we haven't. Um, it's in our proposed budget for the upcoming year. We believe that if that position isn't filled, that we have the, the capacity to handle the additional cases. The issue we have with the new judges mm -hmm. is we have two more courtrooms that you have to be in, and, and so we don't have enough bodies necessarily to hit all of those courtrooms. It's less a matter of cases, number of cases, as a number of places you have to be. But you're comfortable with uh, on assuming that we're... Yeah, and, and the intention is that we're going to revisit this after a year, we don't have super good numbers on the number of cases that are generated in Hayden. Based on what they do know, it's we think it's a manageable number based on the, the revenue that it would be generating. Once we have a year under our belt, we'll have better count and we'll have a better handle on how many cases and what types of cases we're seeing. And we'll revisit at that point okay. whether or not that compensation makes sense or not. Okay. Thank you. Al. I had a question on uh, <clears throat> item D, the asphalt chip seal. I guess I'll wait till John gets up here. Look at him run. Sprinting. Oh <laughs> I'll ask the question so he can answer as soon as he gets here out of breath. <clears throat> so we had this issue a few years ago where the chip seal that we contracted with the contractor met the, the contract, but it was a pretty crappy job. So did we change the the specs or something in there so that that wouldn't happen again? Yeah, as a uh, John Beecham Public Works Director, and as I recall, the the issue was both with the spec and with the oversight we were doing, so we've addressed both of those. The spec was updated following that year, and then we've also been retaining an engineering firm to do quality control inspections um, as that product is applied. So uh, through both of those, we've had pretty successful application the last couple, three years. I don't recall which year was the off year a few years back 
I'm always reminded of it because my street was one of those that <laughs> so. forever etched. Well, yeah. well, and to follow up on that, I got a lot of calls. I was up in the Highlands quite a, quite a few times uh, looking, and they and they had a concern. They had a legitimate concern. Yeah. Um, I know we've gone with pole asphalt. They've done a very good job. I know there's a big discrepancy and a big difference in the bids, and so I know we go with the lower bid. But I want to make sure that as a city we're comfortable. I, I don't know the the uh, bidder that we will award this to, but are, are you comfortable that they can maintain that level of service and the quality of work? I, be careful how I answer that because <laughs> we're, we do need to award to the low bid. So um, they, the bids were reviewed for having the appropriate license to do the work in Idaho and that sort of thing. Uh, they are bonded for the job. So in the event they weren't able to do it or it wasn't done correctly, we do have that bond. Um, and then we really fall back on our spec, uh, what they're required to do in the contract and that quality control inspection to make sure that the product that any one contractor comes and applies should be fairly uniform um, as long as they're following that spec. So. John, can you keep us posted as this progresses after you see some of the work? Just give us an update to make sure things are going fine. Yeah, we can do that. Good, appreciate it. Thanks, John. Any other comment, no. questions? Entertain a motion. I would move to approve the consent calendar as presented. Second. Motion second. Further discussion? Roll call, please. Borders? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item up is public hearings. Tonight we do have one, the Jacqueline Riverbend annexation. And I will just remind everybody that the way it works is we will have staff <coughs> present. We will hear from the applicant, people wishing to testify. Please sign the form the uh, DS in the back, give it to Shannon, and uh, you will have a timer in front of you, uh, four minutes to speak. So we will adhere to the timeline. Uh, with that, I will open the public hearing. All right. Good evening, Good evening, Mayor Jacobson, Council Members, Laura Jones, Associate Planner, City of Post Falls, introducing the Jacqueline Riverbend annexation. The property owner is Jacqueline Land Company and Miller Stover Architects is the applicant. The requested action tonight is for you to review the Planning and Zoning Commission's recommendation for zoning of high density residential R3 on 10.48 acres and a second zoning of community commercial services on 1.61 acres um, on two separate parcels into the city of Post Falls. The site's located south of the intersection of West Point Parkway and West Riverbend Avenue, just south of I-90. The site is currently used for industrial purposes primarily. There was an uh, office building on one of the lots, however, that has been recently demolished and no longer is there. Um, there are two no notable characteristics, which include the Spokane River and a steep embankment on the west property line. And then City of Post Falls will provide sewer and water to the site. Looking at the surrounding zoning to the north uh, is zoned SD1, which is a special district. This is the only property in the entire city limits with this zoning, so it's unique in that sense. Um, it's primarily commercial and industrial lease spaces. To the east is the Greyhound uh, Park and Event Center, which is industrial. Spokane River borders the property to the south, and then to the west is uh, unincorporated Kootenai County property, which is currently undeveloped. I'm going to flip through a couple photos of the site just to give you an idea, kind of shows the perspective of the direction the picture was taken. This first one was on uh, West Riverbend Avenue, taken towards the east, and this is showing that steep embankment on that property line uh, that borders the Greyhound Event Center. Um, the industrial uses on site right now is shown are um, <coughs> semi-trailer storage, and there is a building. I don't know the use of the building, but I think it is associated with these trailer storage. Uh, this is the office building site that was demolished, so no longer there. Spokane River, you can see the steep slope going down to the river. Uh, we will talk about this photo again in a little while. Looking to the west, the site is undeveloped. This is where the R3 zoning will be located. Uh, relatively flat site, and like I just said, it's undeveloped currently. 
looking at the proposed zoning in the orange you can see that location that we're looking at the 10.48 acres for high density residential r3 in the red you'll see the ccs 1.61 acres on that east property line again on that east embankment The Planning and Zoning Commission looked into six different zone change rec review criteria during their April 27th meeting. They verified that amendments to the zoning map should be in accordance with the future land use map. Future land use map calls this out as a commercial land use designation, which provides for commercial and residential uses. CCS is an implementing zoning district, however, R3 is not. So we turn to the, propo or the focus area of the comprehensive plan which is called out as being the Riverbend focus area, and that does allow for commercial business and potential additional residential. Second zone change review criteria is that it is consistent with the goals and policies found within the comprehensive plan. Staff reviewed two goals and five policies that were relevant to this annexation. The first goal is goal five, to keep Post Falls neighborhoods safe, vital, and attractive. The second is goal seven, to plan for and establish types and quantities of land uses in Post Falls, supporting community needs and the city's long-term sustainability. So to meet the goals, policies are implemented to help guide the development. Again, staff looked at five of these policies that were relevant. The first is that uh, policy one is to support land use patterns that maintain and enhance community levels of service, foster the long-term fiscal health of the community, maintain and enhance residential quality of life, promote compatible, well-designed development, and implement the goals and policies of the comprehensive plan and master, and, uh, master plan and facility plans. So um, being that additional houses are going to be added to the area and paying impact fees at the time of development, as well as providing a community where people can have that live, work, play lifestyle um, the project is in line with this first policy. Looking at the second policy is to apply and revise zoning designations with careful consideration of the factors including the future land use map which we just touched on, compatibility with surrounding land uses, infrastructure service plans, uh, existing and future traffic patterns, and then the goals and policies again in the comprehensive plan. Uh, I've talked about that future land use map and the focus area which allows the commercial uses. City staff confirmed that the proposed uses are in conformance with the city's reclamation, excuse me, the city's water reclamation master plan and then the city has the capacity and the willingness to serve water to the site. The existing road infrastructure can handle the proposed annexation. Riverbend is a local commercial roadway um, and can support that. Looking into the city's transportation master plan, a multimodal trail um, along the Spokane River is outlined in that plan, and the applicant is willing to dedicate either through a right-of-way dedication or an easement a portion of the property along Spokane River to meet the needs of that trail. And again, this is the location. It uh, has been discussed that just a section on that flat part at the top or potentially just on the upper part of the slope is where that trail will someday be located. At this time, they're just looking for a dedication. Uh, policy eight is to encourage compatible infill development and redevelopment of vacant and underutilized properties. Uh, bound between the city limits and the Spokane River, this site is currently underutilized. It's, like I said, primarily vacant. So annexing it in will add additional tax base to the city, whereas currently there is little tax base. Policy nine is to encourage annexation of county islands within the city with priority given to areas surrounded by incorporated areas that readily have service infrastructure and capacity and support increased development intensity near the urban core, which I'm not going to reiterate. We've already touched on all of those. Uh, the last policy is 15, to ensure adequate land is available for housing needs, helping serve residents of all ages, incomes, and abilities through provision of diverse housing types and price levels. Uh, you can see the breakdown of the percentage of each zone and uh, the percentage of the city. Currently, CCS makes up 15.49% of the city, and R3 currently makes up 1.99% of the city. So the proposed annexation will help provide the diverse housing types at the diverse price levels. 
the third zone change review criteria is that zoning is assigned following considerations of street classification, traffic patterns, existing development, future land uses, community plans, and geographic or natural features. Um, again, we've touched on all of these with exception to the Spokane River. Um, the Spokane River does contain sensitive habitats, which this will be addressed by the requirement to follow local, state, and fed federal regulations associated with the waterway. This includes a flood development permit that city staff reviews and then a FEMA review because they audit our uh, floodplain permits. Uh, the fourth review is that commercial and high density residential zoning is typically assigned <coughs> streets with higher road classification. Again, River Bend is a local commercial roadway and it has uh, connectivity to I-90. Um, the fifth is not applicable. Um, this is not an area that is in the high intensity urban activity area. And then the last zone change review criteria is regarding industrial zoning and that it is typically um, assigned for properties with sufficient access to major transportation routes and may be situated from residential zoning. Um, there will be a buffer between the residential zoning and the industrial site to the east, the Greyhound Park. There's going to be that, um, oh, I didn't have it in there, the 1.61 acre commercial site between the two. So that will act as a buffer in itself. And then there's also that east embankment. This is the list of agencies that were notified for review and given the chance to comment on the project. Uh, four responded, the Post Falls Police Department, Post Falls Highway District, Kootenai County Fire and Rescue were all neutral. Idaho Department of Environmental Quality <coughs> gave general comments that will be applicable at the time of construction. And I can take any questions you Richard have. Laura at this point. I'll go ahead. Laura, in the um, staff report, there was some concern about compatibility with the uh, Greyhound Park and some of the events that they have. Mm -hmm. They talked about maybe putting something in the, I don't know, in the covenants or something, but has that been addressed or? Uh, Warren has had discussions uh, with the applicant, I believe, about potentially writing something up into the annexation agreement, but I can let him touch further on that if you have further questions. So I've spoken with both the um, an attorney working with the applicant as well as an attorney for the, the Greyhound Park. I think everybody's comfortable that this can be addressed in the annexation agreement with some language essentially putting lessees, people who are moving in or buyers on notice that they're moving into an area that, that is going to be potentially noisy because you're in, a, in an area of predominantly industrially zoned property. So I, I don't think it's an issue that's a major issue at this point, but it's something we'll be looking to put something in the annexation agreement to address. Okay, great. One more question. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking for the letter. There was a letter from a couple by the last name of Brown that said that they're views would be blocked or whatever by this. Can you speak to that? Do you know anything about that? I do not, but uh, unless there's a view shed easement, I don't know if that's something that the city can address. It's probably a civil matter, but again, I can let Warren touch on that. I'm not exactly sure, but my understanding was that these folks live across the river and looking oh. back at this site and were concerned that that would block their view. I'm, I'm, but I don't, I guess, Mike, what I was looking at is changing the, uh, the zoning there and allowing a multifamily. Is the heights that much different than what they could do if it was still industrial? No, I mean, if it's probably more to do with any development is going to have an impact on your view. If you're looking across the river at this site, any structure that goes on that site is going to, change their view in some form or fashion. Okay. Question? I'm good. Good. Thank you, Laura. Does the applicant wish to present? <coughs> Name for the record, please. Uh, my name is Mike Walker with Miller Stoffer Architects. I'm acting as the applicant's representative. Um, 
I want to thank City Council for um, hearing our application for annexation, as well as the mayor. Um, the applicant basically owns roughly 12 acres of site located around um, Riverbend Avenue. Um, as you've seen in the previous presentation, it's up on that bluff. Um, pre previously, it was there where their headquarters was. Um, they also had some industrial operation in that area. Um, they've since, obviously, because of the modification of the, the seed industry, um, have changed how that site has basically been used throughout the years. And so um, with the growth of the city and, and some of the needs, um, they thought this was a good time to um, get annexed into the city of Post Falls. Um, currently, um, it is two parcels, as mentioned before. Um, parcel A is a 1.6 acre parcel. Um, we're asking for CCS zoning, and then the other parcel, the larger parcel, is 10.479 acres, um, which we're asking for R3 zoning. Um, the owner's intent is to provide a uh, mixed-use development um, with multiple buildings um, that will provide commercial opportunities as well as residential condominiums. Um, the condominiums are intended to be uh, sold, so they would uh, most likely be owner-occupied. Um, so they're, for lack of a better term, they're not rentals or apartments, I guess. Um, like I mentioned, we envisioned a mixed-use development that has coffee shops, fitness centers, boutique shops, potential office spaces, um, green space, residential condominiums, with the idea of creating kind of a live-work um, hub right there along the river um, to, again, try to keep people in that location and not have them go across the whole city for different things. Um, and I'll kind of hit on a couple other things as we go through the site. but. As most of you are familiar, um, the site is currently right here. Um, Riverbend Commerce Park is right here. Um, this is primarily industrial and commercial, commercial here. And then across the way, um, there are several um, commercial entities as well as residential. So this neighborhood or focus area kind of has a mix of things going on already. And so we feel this kind of plays into that as well. Um, there are some um, close by city service or community services like Walmart. Um, so for a community of like this, they don't have to go very far to go grocery shopping or do some of their shopping. Um, talking a little bit about the, the zoning, um, we felt the, the mixed use buffer uh, zoning actually added to this project. Um, as mentioned by Laura, parcel A, we're asking for CCS zoning. Um, this would act as a, a buffer between the residential component and the industrial component at the Greyhound Park, um, as well as the rest of the industrial in um, Riverbend Commerce Park. And then um, I, I would like to note that this site is, as you've seen in the site photos, significantly lower than the adjacent site. Um, so there is some buffering that happens because of that. Next to that is obviously the R3, which is the big bulk of the site. Um, R3 being a higher density residential is a nice buffer between um, commercial uses, which is what's across the street of Riverbend Avenue. Um, we felt this was a better zoning mix than say a single family residential or something of that nature um, for this site. So that's why we requested this. Um, and then obviously the total acres is a little bit over 12. Um, what makes this site a little bit unique is its proximity to the state line as well as the city of Post Falls um, and the surrounding area. We feel that by providing a residential component to this, um, it would give um, residents of the uh, city of Post Falls another opportunity um, to use the amenities that the site has as well as the surrounding area. I've kind of given you some just kind of different um, drives. Again, obviously traffic is always a concern, um, especially as we grow. And so with this, there's a lot of um, close by. Obviously the I-90 is really close by, so it's easy to get on and off, as well as um, the Centennial Trail runs right past this site. So 
it provides a lot of amenities um, for local community and um, again we feel it's a appropriate use for the site. Um, just touching on a little bit on schools um, and their proximity um, and then the drives that are adjacent to that and um, based on the if approved the entitled zoning would essentially allow 216 units if you times that by the the standard of 0.2 kids per unit you would essentially have 36 kids in this development um, and so recognizing that we you know plan to do things within the site to try to keep um, some local amenities to this development um, again, talking on uh, recreation, Laura mentioned the trail. Um, we're in, in agreement um, with putting a trail on the site um, and putting it either at the top of the slope or somewhere in the mid of the slope, um, providing that um, public access or future public access to the Spokane River. So. And then, as mentioned, the Centennial Trail is close by. Um, from an emergency services standpoint, I mean, we're really close to KCFR station number two, so again, we don't feel like um, that's a hindrance for this. And then um, talking about um, the street, water, sewer, because this is an infill site, we're not asking to expand the city's um, requirements for more streets or roads. It's already serving this site, as well as because of a previous expansion of Riverbend Avenue, um, there are several utilities that are already sub stubbed to the site. And then on the one end of the site, there is a sewer lift station that at some point, if the site to the west is annexed in, would move further down the line. Um, so why is this annexation a benefit? Um, it provides an additional residential housing type in this section of the city. Um, supports future growth of Riverbend Commerce Park, West Point Parkway, and Expo area. Again, um, providing local housing to all that commercial that is right there. Uh, mixed use development that supports residences within the development and the surrounding area. Um, as we mentioned, the future pedestrian trail, which we find would be an amenity to the city. Um, because it's surrounded on two sides and then the Spokane River it again unifies the city boundary to the um, based on your comp plan which was noted um, and then like I mentioned it puts little burden on the city infrastructure because it's pretty much already in place so we think this is a, a good fit for the city of Post Falls and um, we hope <coughs> you share the same sentiment and we Any take questions? consideration go ahead Steve first yeah Mike uh, one question I'd have, or maybe two questions, is do you have a proposed rendering of the condo? Something in mind? Is it going to be more linear, or what, what is the height proposal? Um, Not right now. So R3, I believe, is limited to 45 feet. So that essentially is a, a four-story structure maximum um, that could be located along there. Um, obviously, the, the key feature to this site is the Spokane River. Um, so most likely they would be located along that river's edge um, but we haven't I don't have any renderings of what okay. the project would be. And would the are you looking at maybe the the proposed trail connecting to the Centennial Trail somehow coming off? I think the so Probably not included in this trail. project but I think the city of Post Falls planning documents um, show a trail that would eventually connect in with Corbin Park and then the Centennial Trail down at the point. So I think the intent of the city is to provide a, a secondary commuter trail that would run along the river. Um, and I think that also, if the Centennial Trail ever moved because of ITD, that would provide a, another outlet in the connectivity. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. A uh, question about <laughs> parks. I'm always concerned about those 36 kids and where they're going to go play. I know that there's a, what I would call a park, that's between the Centennial Trail and the freeway and the river. I mean, there's a restroom out there, but is that a city park? It's not a city park. County park? It's a park. Mm -hmm. I call it a park. <laughs> Place to play. Dave Fair, Park and Rec Director. So that is a county park at this point it's called state line park at some point they'll transfer it over to the city but that's in the, the distant future i didn't 
I mean, I've been out there a million times, and it's relatively close, but do we know about how close that is? It's less than half a mile, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. A quarter mile? Quarter mile, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's essentially located right here. Yep. And um, kind of maybe if I can find the slide. Um, there are two parks, one right here and one right here, that are current City of Post Falls parks. As Those, well. Is that Woodbridge? Or? Woodbridge, yeah. yes. Yeah. That's and cross then, freeway, though. And then Corbin Park um, is right here, which obviously, when the trail goes in, that would create direct co connectivity to that park. Okay. That's all I got. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Wishing to speak. <clears throat> In favor? So no opposition. <coughs> in favor of wishing to speak, uh, Wade Jacklin. I put not wishing to speak. <coughs> or it, that was my intent. Okay, I, I will read your comment. Okay. Thank you. Excellent infill project providing great retail and residential opportunities. A good new asset for the city of Pulse Falls. Uh, not wishing to speak. I got it. Actually, wait. You said not wishing to speak. I just misread it. I'm sorry. Uh, not wishing to speak, uh, but in favor is Scott Roundtree. And in favor, uh, Levi Snyder. I would like to express support for this project. It helps meet a need for residential housing options in the area, especially along the state line. Luke Gonzalez, I support this annexation. Marissa Davenport, I support the project. Emily Bradley, I support the Jacqueline site riverbend annexation. Scott Krajak, uh, I am in favor of the Jacqueline riverbend annexation. I won't be able to, uh, to attend tonight's meeting, uh, but please read my support in the record. Pulse Falls really needs more projects like this. Please approve this annexation and zoning. Leslie Streeter, I am in favor of the Riverbend annexation that will be heard at tonight's council meeting. It will add much needed mixed use in the area. Angela Erickson, having reviewed the Jacks having reviewed the Jacklin Riverbend annexation request, request, I wish to offer my support. It seems to be an excellent setting for additional housing, which is desperately needed in Kootenai County. Additional housing needs to come online so we can continue to attract companies to Idaho with higher paying jobs to offer supply to ex ex existing residents and help lower the skyrocketing costs of homes in our area. Uh, Chris Meyer, I'm writing supporting the annexation request by Jacqueline Land Company for the 12 acre site at 5500 River Bend Avenue. The proposed area to be annexed is already supported by full infrastructure and has easy access with minimal congestion. Additional housing units are desperately needed in our community and this location will provide new residential development opportunities without overtaxing the existing infrastructure or requiring more public investment in roads and utilities. I would encourage you to adopt the recommendation of your Planning and Zoning Commission and approve the request requested rezone. Thanks. I don't imagine there's going to be any rebuttal from the applicant. You wish to say something? I'm uh, Tom Stoser with Jacqueline Land Company. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk. Uh, I'd like to address the <clears throat> dog tracks concerns. Um, just because the dog track is hoping to resume concerts someday doesn't mean they will or will do it indefinitely into the future. They could sell the property. You could have totally different uses provided under the industrial code. Um, it makes no sense to require one property to record a separate notice about unforeseen uses. And if it is required, I assume that means that every annexation in the future that has a zoning other than the zoning requested would have to have this special notification. 
Um, that said, we are going to have a disclosure in our CCNRs that specifically point out that nearby properties have specific uses that are under different zoning. And the CCR will be recorded. It's a matter of each unit's title and will be of public record. And every one of our condominium buyers will have a copy of these CCNRs. I would think this would satisfy the dog's concern outlined in their letter uh, that the occupants of the condominiums need to know what we're going to be living to next door, living with next door. And it negates the need to include any kind of separate annexation uh, notification. Um, that said, it is the individual property owner's rights and obligations to know the zoning of adjacent properties then the use is applicable to. That's why we have zoning. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, Tom? <coughs> Thank you. I will close the public hearing. Council, how would you like to act? I'm, I'm in favor. I, I believe that it's a good project. Again, the infrastructure is there. <coughs> it makes perfect sense. That property along that river is very desirable. I don't think that it's going to be an inexpensive place to live. And um, I would agree with the gentleman that just spoke that in the covenants, codes, and restrictions, as long as uh, the, the condominium purchasers uh, are, they have that in their codes, covenants, and restrictions, they know that there is industrial all around it. It's pretty easy to see out there. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very much in favor. Lynn? I'm in favor. I think it's an excellent location for that type of a development. Takes good advantage of the use of the river as far as a view goes, and, and uh, I, I think you can't go wrong there. Steve? No, I agree. I'm in uh, support of this. I think uh, perfect project fits the area, plus with the uh, dedication of the trail along the river for the public. and. I can see the future of a connection between Corbin Park and the Centennial Trail farther down. So I think it just uh, fits into our master plans for the city and it's a good project and a good infill project. Thank you. Joe Park. I actually ended up chuckling to myself as I got into the packet on this one because when I first read the council memo and it said R3 as an annexation, I thought there's there's no way I'm, I'm going to vote for an R3 <coughs> annexation right now just because everything's growing so fast. We don't have the infrastructure. Then I got into the packet and the details. Of the, and Beck Road is the most underused interchange we've got, so there's plenty of room there. River Bend Avenue is incredibly underused right now, so it can certainly handle it. Uh, it's over towards State Line. Grocery shopping is right there. Uh, parks are right there. Most of the residents will probably work across the border. Liberty Lake is just as close or closer than downtown Post Falls is. And I thought, man, if there was ever one exception to my mindset going into it, <laughs> this is probably it. So just for the the sheer lack of impact that an R3 could possibly have on a city, th this is this is probably it. So I'm in support of it. Oh. <coughs> uh, well, I'm always, I always have to go back to what might happen. And I know that when I look at this and it's, you know, condos and it's, you know, coffee shops and, you know, it's like, wow, this is a perfect fit. And then I'm thinking, well, we've seen some of these perfect fits in that not always materialized, so it could end up being an apartment building. It's R3. We can't control that after this if we approve it. But then I thought about it from like what Joe's talking about. Even if it is, does end up just being a, <coughs> an apartment building, it's, it has very little impact on the rest of the city. There's city services out there, there's places to go and eat, there's a park nearby. You know, it's just, it just fits. It, and you know, I'm keeping responsible growth at the top of my mind, and I, I'd say that this is as responsible as we can get. So I'd love to see the condos. I think that would be cool with a coffee shop and whatever out there. But even if it ends up just being an apartment building, it's still going to be a good fit. So I'm thank, for it. Thank you, Carrie. Well, <coughs> a little bit of what everyone said that I won't repeat. So what I will say is for decades, generations, the Jacqueline family has been engaged and contributing to the quality of life in our community and the whole entire area. 
and I have absolutely no doubt that this project will be a quality project and it will be as described. So I am very much in support. Well, as people, have, some of the folks have said, when I read R3, I'm thinking, uh-oh, apartments, and I've kind of made my feeling known on apartments. Um, <clears throat> was very pleased to see condos, mixed use, and uh, I'm gonna echo what Carrie just said. If anyone's gonna do it and do it right, it's the Jacklins. So I'm, I would also, uh, I, I, after listening, reading the packet and knowing if this came down to a split vote, I would have broken the tie in favor. So uh, that isn't gonna happen, but with that, I would entertain a motion. I would move to approve the Jacklin River Bend annexation file number ANNX-0003-2021, parcel A as uh, CCS 1.6 acres, parcel B as R3 approximately 10.4 acres. Second. second. Motion seconds. Further discussion? Shannon, please take the roll. Thorson? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Orders? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. Thank you, gentlemen. Next item up is unfinished business, returning ordinances and resolutions, and the first is a Pioneer Ridge Lift Station decommissioning recommendation of award. <clears throat> oh. Good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. Craig Bornpole, Utilities Manager for the City. And I'm back before you tonight to uh, discuss the Pioneer Ridge list station uh, decommissioning with a recommendation of award. So a reminder, the Pioneer Ridge lift station is off of Chase Road, um, and you can see it in proximity to City Hall in our water reclamation facility. Uh, the existing lift station, uh, as it stands today, is slated for decommissioning, so we completely take it offline and have sewer flows flow by gravity. Um, so project progress, uh, this project was identified in our 2019 master plan as a priority one project. Uh, we came before you in November of last year and you authorized an engineering contract to uh, design the decommissioning of this lift station. Uh, our engineer went off and, and developed those uh, construction plans. Um, we took those out to bid and their estimate the engineer's estimate, which is just basically their best guess of what we'll expect bids to come in at, was 413680 And we received a low bid from Big Sky Idaho Corp of $387,159. So that bid was reviewed by our city legal staff uh, and our contracted engineer um, uh, also issued a recommendation of award for that. So the bid was reviewed and, and deemed responsive by our legal staff, I should say. So the financials of the project, uh, the construction contract as stated, $387,159. Uh, a 10% contingency is requested for this. We have a, a tight contract uh, window to complete the work, and there's some challenges there. We have a, a water line that we're gonna be crossing um, with some unique materials that uh, we're, we think the, the planning that has gone in, we have you know, real good plans, but sometimes you get underneath and uh, see something different. So um, a 10% contingency, so uh, authorized, uh, the request would be to authorize up to 425874 for this project, funded through our collections projects budget. Um, next steps, uh, awarding now will allow the, the contractor to procure materials. Everyone's talking about materials right now. So though the project is slated to begin after Labor Day, um, awarding now will let them get those materials so that when we do get in the road, we minimize our time um, digging up Chase Road. We can get in and get out uh, in that short amount of time. Mm. So, relatively quick, but uh, yeah, available for any questions on this project. Greg, I mentioned I had a question, but you did answer it. Uh, I saw the fiscal impact of 425,000 when I saw the, the bid of 300 and some, and what I did not take into consideration was the contingency, so that was addressed. Perfect. I, I told Craig I was gonna have a question, but who's there? Craig, so it says decommissioning, so what we're taking one piece, one whatever offline and replacing it with something new is that perfect so um yeah i appreciate the question um the right now all sewer flows into this lift station it is pumped from there uh to where um 
uh, down the way it, it discharges to gravity and, and flows to gravity. There's been enough sewer improvements that we've run gravity all the way up to this lift station. So we can take it offline completely and it'll flow from gravity uh, from you know, the whole sewer basin that this lift station serves so that we won't need to in the future do any maintenance on this lift station, replace it, uh, all of that goes away. So um, by adding the about 500 feet of gravity line and tying into some, some new gravity line just downstream of this, we can take the lift station offline and it's not a maintenance headache, not a safety headache, we never need to replace it, we just let gravity do the work from here on out. Okay, that's a great explanation because I could not figure out in my mind how you take this off and it's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Any other questions, Craig? So we would need a motion. Very good job, thank you. And I would move to approve the Pioneer Ridge lift station decommissioning recommendation of award with a 10% contingency in the amount of $425,874. Second. Motion second. Discussion. Roll call, please. Wolf. Aye. Wilhelm. Aye. Malloy. Aye. Anthony. Aye. Orders. Aye. Thorson? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. Next uh, item up is the ordinance on the corporate park zone change. Move to place the ordinance on the corporate park zone change on its first and only reading while or by, or reading by title only while under suspension of the rules. Second. Motion second. Discussions? Roll call, please. Wilhelm? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Orders? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Motion passes. Mr. Wilson. An ordinance of the City of Post Falls, a municipal corporation of the state of Idaho, providing for change in zoning classification for the land described in Section 1 of this ordinance from community commercial services to industrial, providing for amendment of the official zoning map to reflect this change, providing that all prior zones applicable to lands described in Section 1 are hereby superseded, and providing an effective date. Move to approve the ordinance corporate park zone change to direct the clerk to assign the appropriate number and that it be published by summary only. Second. Motion second. Discussion. Roll call, please. Malloy? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Orders? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item up is the Black Stallion Ranch Zone Change Ordinance. Move to place the ordinance Black Stallion Ranch Zone Change on its first and only reading by title only while under suspension of the rules. Second. Motion second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Anthony? Aye. Orders? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Which passes. Mr. Wilson. An ordinance of the City of Post Falls, a municipal corporation of the state of Idaho, providing for change in zoning classification <clears throat> for the lands described in Section 1 of this ordinance from single-family suburban to single-family residential, providing for amendment of the official zoning map to reflect this change, providing that all prior zones applicable to lands described in Section 1 are hereby superseded, and providing an effective date. Move to approve the ordinance Black Stallion Ranch Zone Change to direct the clerk to assign the appropriate number and that it be published by summary only. Second. Motion second for the discussion. Roll call, please. Orders? Aye. Thorson? <coughs> Aye. Wolf? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item, new business. Tonight we have none, followed by citizens' issue. And this section of the agenda is reserved for citizens wishing to address the council regarding city-related issues that are not on the agenda. If anyone wishes to speak, please come forward. Bob Flowers, good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. Well, I originally wanted to speak on one item, but uh, today's uh, rainstorms kind of persuaded me to add something to it. I don't know what's going on with our city sweeping <coughs> the streets and keeping them clean, but I can't remember the last time we saw a city sweeper over in our neighborhood. And today, with all that rain that finally came, the drains, the street drains started flooding. They're plugged. They're, they're solid with pine needles and junk and everything that's going on. And I'd like to know what's been going on. We used to get our streets swept 
quite often. Now, I, like I said, I can't remember the last time. Anyway, that was one issue. The second issue is this new fiber optic outfit. I went on vacation. Which one, Bob? TDS, probably. TDS, TDS. Zippy, TDS? Yeah, TDS. They, um, I went on vacation a couple of weeks ago. No notification. I saw the locators had gone out there and drawn all kinds of pictures across my yard and things like that and in the street. But no notification from them folks. I left on vacation on, uh, on a Sunday. Well, Wednesday, I get a text and pictures from my neighbor. They've got five holes dug across my front yard. I forget, like three or four across my side yard. And nobody even bothered to tell me that they were coming. They didn't notify me of anything. And uh, to their credit, they cut my sprinkler lines in a couple places, but they also repaired them. But the thing of it is, is they, there, there needs to be some kind of notice, some kind of something, whether it's a door hanger or what. But I left on vacation not knowing that somebody was going to be digging a ton of holes in my front yard. That's all I have. I guess my, my comment would be I'm glad they fixed the sprinklers because had you been gone and they not fixed the sprinklers, you would come home to a mess. So I, I guess that's one of the positive. But where are we on that? So um, Jim McKay out of our engineering department has been meeting with both TDS and Zipley. We received some positive, positive comments back from citizens where we've gone out and had them remove dirt piles and we've had them hit a water main. There's been several items where we bring them in and then we tell them basically what they are and are not allowed to do. When they are told what to do that we do get compliance but then they fall out of compliance again over time. So citizens reporting to us what's going on is the most helpful way for us to then be in contact with the fiber companies and let them know what's going on and what they need to correct. Have we, have we or could we talk to them about notification? I will look to legal on that. I believe we have, but okay. we can talk to them again. I would appreciate because okay. I, think, I think that's a very good point. Also, we can have um, Public Works Director John Beecham come up and speak to the street sweeping. He did send me an email, and he's working with finance. There's been some repair issues with our uh, street sweeper and uh, inability to get parts, but he can speak to it much more eloquently than I can. If you would like to have him come up, he's it right there. It might help also if somebody spoke English. I had to go through seven different people yeah. <laughs> to find one that could understand what so I So again, saying. calling the city and talking to our staff, I think, is probably the most beneficial. We, we all speak English here, and so, um, Bob, if you have those, just call and talk to Jim McKay in engineering, or if you call the city hall, we'll get you to the right in the individual here in engineering. They're all Mexicans. They speak Spanish. You're welcome. John. Thank you for the opportunity to speak on street sweeping. John Beecham, Public Works Director. Uh, we do have two street sweepers that we would normally be cycling around on a, a bi-weekly rotation through the city. Uh, I say normally, we, as Shelley indicated, we're having some issues. Uh, our first street sweeper was purchased in 2000. It is now our spare street sweeper. It's 20 years old. It's been rebuilt a couple of times. And the, uh, the issues it has right now are cost prohibitive to repair. So under, again, normal circumstances, that would be fine. We purchased a new street sweeper uh, less than a year ago, or it was delivered less than a year ago, and it would be our primary duty street sweeper. However, it's been in a shop with warranty issues all spring. Um, I saw there were some comments on street sweeping uh, posted to social media, and these were not issues that were known in the fall that we didn't work on throughout the winter. These were things that cropped up uh, with the electronics of it and had to send it into the shop this spring once we were trying to get it underway. So we are behind on street sweeping for the year. I do recognize that that is a frustration to citizens. It's a frustration to us. We would like to have that grit off the streets to prolong their life. Uh, we are working on getting the new street sweeper repaired as quickly as possible. We're also working with finance on potentially replacing that 20-year-old street sweeper with something that would uh, be a little more reliable. Um, these are expensive machines, so we're not talking $100,000, we're talking more like $300,000. So 
takes a bit to figure out how to finance something like that. Good. Appreciate the chance to talk. Thanks, John. Anyone else? I have one. That's right, you do. <laughs> this one came in through the internet. It's from Jennifer McGuire, and she lives on Wayward Circle. Her comment is she's a concerned homeowner in the Meadow Grove with an attractive nuisance in our community park that has not met all its requirements that the city of Post Falls requested from the developer. So I'm going to assume that Dave, you're going to pass that on to Mr. Fair and he will follow up? It's not a city park. It's, it's, um, it's a private park. Oh, it's, it's a private, private park, park. So oh. it's, they're asking community development to enforce regulations against okay. the uh, developer. Got out of it, Dave. So Get I will, I'll defer to Warren and Bob Seal on that. Get that. Yeah, so we'll look into it a little bit more. Um, the issue is, uh, I believe, and I, I'm hearing this secondhand, so I'm not positive, but that there's a piece of playground equipment that's in place in the, the HOA-owned park that may be not up to scratch. That I, I've been told it was purchased at Costco. I don't know. We've had a request from some citizens for us to come in and take that down. It's not our property. We don't really have the right to go on somebody else's property and take something away. Um, there is some concern that maybe some of the requirements for the developer were not fully completed. I think the planning department's working on that, trying to get that completed. Okay, thank That's you. That's kind of what I know about that. I see Bob standing up, so. <laughs> Does that summarize it? For the most part, yeah. We have been, I have been in communication with, um, with complainants over the past year, year and a half regarding the site. Um, this is one of those that they had come through as a private development with a private park and typically we kind of hold up phase two of a development when there is public amenities such as this that are not technically um, you know like a public park from us um, so we usually hold it up while they finish that however they did some modifications to the plans in order to basically continue on with phase one so there was never a phasing agreement established um, we have been in contact with the developer and we've also been in contact with the developers <clears throat> finance financing group actually or backer um, and we are working to get everything done um, however it is taking time uh, more time than we wanted to put into this obviously but we understand their concerns and we're working on it as much can as you can. bring us uh, bring back an update in a future meeting I can do what I can absolutely Please. thank you Next item is the administrative staff reports, and that's Tullamore, Tullamore Sports Complex Mass Grading. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council, Robbie Quinn, Parks Planner, and I'm just here to give you an update on the status of the Tullamore Sports Complex, specifically the mass grading. Um, so back in November, we came before Council for the mass grading plan from our consultants um, MTLA and TO and so that's what we're here those plans have been complete and just kind of giving an update on going out to bid for the mass grading and so I just have a few pictures kind of current state of the park a little difficult to see but um, large topsoil piles some debris piles they've been used quite heavily by um, off-road vehicles, dirt bikes, ATVs, UTVs, etc. cetera. Um, this is looking south along Cecil. So as you can see, Cecil has been completed at this point um, next to the Pradera subdivision. So this is now a, no a known um, elevation for us. So that we knew that going into the mass grading plan. So we designed the plan to coordinate with this road and the elevations so we'll be able to actually tie those together during the mass grading uh, just a few more pictures again some debris piles um, topsoil and again a lot of off-road tracks um, so it's going out to bid tomorrow it'll be up for two weeks bids will be due June 30th and then um, the engineering and legal will review the submitted bids for um, recommendation and then we'll be back in July 20th for uh, council review of that contract. Thank you. Have any questions, comments? Thank you. Thanks. 
Mayor and Council, comments. Fourth uh, of July is coming up. Hopefully, it's going to be nice weather. Please be safe. Uh, I know we had some rain today, but things are still very dry. Please be cognizant of that. Uh, I, I live like all of us do in the city, which is a no fireworks zone. And I go out every 5th of July and fill a, wheelbar fill a wheelbarrow full of spent fireworks. So please be careful. Don't start any fires. Uh, Ma'am, I'd just like to comment, yes, on, on your son there. Uh, to have him sit through a meeting <laughs> for an hour and show that kind of uh, uh, behavior, if you will, which is better than most of our staff, by the way. Uh, he, he should be complimented, and obviously that goes back to parents. So thank you. He's, he's been a, a true gentleman while he's been here. Steve. Uh, I'd like to just make a few comments uh, kind of after Bob uh, spoke about TDS Fiber. I'd like to thank staff. I, as you know, I work at the hospital, and I work with quite a few people that live in Tullamore. So after TDS Fiber went through... Uh, I had a steady stream of visitors in my office from fellow employees say, what do I do? They tore up my yard, cut my sprinkler system, broke a water line. And so I told them to call the staff. They, within two or three days, they said staff was out there, met with them, talked to them. Uh, they said our staff handled it professionally. Any damage that was done was, was fixed to their satisfaction. So thank you staff for following up. Made my, my life a lot easier and I'm sure that Bob's neighborhood, you're not the only neighborhood that's got hit, <laughs> that uh, just about everybody I know lives in some neighborhood and TDS fibers went through and wreaked havoc. <laughs> so, <laughs> as well, so. So, so, but thank you staff for, for taking care of that. Uh, I don't know, he said there's about six or seven staff people that met with the Tola, Tolomore neighbors and they said they're all very professional and handled it and they were very happy with the response from the city. Thanks Steve. Linda? Um, I have a few things. Uh, number one, I know that most people here got letters and phone calls regarding the boat launch and uh, the parking at the city park. And um, it seems like over the last 12 or 13 years that those complaints have been growing. And uh, for many years, I lived down near there, so I did personally see that. And um, I would like to ask if we could have staff bring back uh, a report or some sort of plan to deal with the out-of-state traffic that is uh, using up the parking for the boat launch. I feel as the population grows, the, the issue has just got worse and worse. Um, I understand that it's really probably not feasible for us to go back to uh, a yearly pass because then the yearly pass people pay for it and they you know it fills up and they can't use it and it's not fair however um, I think it's pretty easy to see an out-of-state license plate and I really honestly feel that we should do something pretty drastic I have some ideas if you want to visit about that secondly um, could you ask him to do that, Mayor? Yeah, I, just, I didn't want to interrupt you, but yeah, Dave, could you touch base and yeah, we'll bring, bring back? We'll bring forward some Perfect. options for council to discuss. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks. Go ahead, uh, secondly, um, the fiber optic place um, totally ripped up our neighborhood, and I do want to thank James Mulcahy. He did he did a really really good job. However, they didn't come back and fix uh, the complaints there. Most of us paid for the fix of our swales and our yards. So that's just one comment I have about them. Not really pleased with that company. Um, and I know that doesn't have anything to do with the city, but just a, on a personal note. And then lastly, I have a neighbor out in my neighborhood that has come to the city and gone to a Vista a couple of times. I know that Bob Seal is aware of this and um, it's still um, really, it is really a problem, and now that it's um, staying light out, it's not as big a problem, but um, because most people don't stay up real late because we're old out there, but that street light at the, ch at the corner of Chase and Grange is so bright. It is like you could, it is, it is honestly, it is too bright. It's very, very bright. It lights up all the backyards there on Chase Avenue from Grange going uh, south, 
and um, on, off of Chase going south. Um, and it's just, it's just too bright. And it needs to be domed. If, if someone could maybe go and look at it when it's lit up, it, I would just ask. Uh, those homeowners have called me again. And so please, if somebody could... A dimmer, about that. Of some kind. <coughs> huh? a dimmer switch of well, some kind. I guy. told him he should probably shoot it out, but then <laughs> I decided that was probably not very good advice. <laughs> so, and I don't have a gun, so Especially don't worry about me. Especially with the chief sitting standing yeah. right yeah, up. Chief. <laughs> Make sure they shoot from outside the city limits. <laughs> okay. Well, this is the first time hearing about Linda's problem of the too bright street light. If I might offer a solution, we will trade her the too dim that flickers street light on Powderhorn Street for your too bright street light. I, I can see a negotiation coming <laughs> right. forward. So. You're in. Yeah, you are. That's all I have. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Do some. I got one thing. Go ahead. I just want to, I'm glad to see that Robbie was here tonight because I just wanted to compliment you and the parks team on the great job that you guys did with the upgrade to Falls Park. Awesome job. Looks really nice. So. Thank you. We do need an executive session for two topics tonight. How long? 15 minutes. I would move to enter into executive session pursuant to Idaho Code 74-2061C to inquire to acquire an interest in real property which is not owned by a public agency. Also Idaho Code 746 1A, to consider hiring a public officer, employee, staff member, or individual agent. Further, that no action will be taken during the session, and the session will last okay. approximately 15 minutes. Second. Motion second. Further discussion? Roll call, please. Thorson? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Orders? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. We'll enter executive session.
call the meeting back to order. Are there any motions to come forward? Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you.